Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. I thought we'd have a quick look at this new lock by Carbine. It's called the Acrobat. Or some people might want to call it the Ballerina. Yeah, anyway, the Ballerina, the Acrobat. This new lock uh, comes out with a different selection of bolts, which is one of the first locks to actually have an interchangeable lock for this type of um, mortise lock. Normally you'd see this type of mortise lock on an aluminium uh, shop front or aluminium glass door where they've got a 50 60 mil channel around the edge of the door This is what we call a flip bolt lock and often they always came in uh, Three different formats your long throw short throw and your hook bolt. I think that's long short and hook So now you, you've got these particular bolts here So you've got a long and a short hook and what happens here is when the door actually closes It uh, goes into a latch keeper on the other side So there's two sizes and it looks like you can use two sizes there for that latch type. That's mainly used for aluminium sliding doors that come together. Um, so yeah, that's good because it's giving us an extra size. Not only that, you can use the long bolt as a long bolt, even though it's got the cutout, it's still gonna do a bit same as a long bolt. What I'm noticing here as well, if I flip them over, you've got this little red section there, and that's to allow it to actually lock in. So here's your post right here, and here is your, um, here's your uh, screw thread. So that would go on like so and then you'd um, pull out the red thing and put it in there properly. On the side, it's not that much different to many other mortise locks. You've got your screws, which are included here. So you've got two cylinder retaining screws, which would slide straight through here, the same, same as a standard mortise lock. Here's a cylinder here. So that would go in there with the hole to the top, and you would put one of these pins in there. In the screw pack there, they've included a couple of little pieces of shim if you want to offset the lock and set it back. You've got your... Um, You've got your other screws there, two, a couple, looks like three for the face plate and a couple for the holding of the body, which is pretty good. These look like they slide, but they don't really slide to me, so I don't know why they're, they're there. Some of the benefits of this particular mortise lock is it comes with the standard metal frame strike, okay? So that's your strike for that, but you can actually get a wooden one, which is larger. That's a, an option. When I bought this lock, the lock itself wasn't too expensive, but then I bought these particular bolts, and then you pay for each part as you go. So if I wanted the complete setup, it would have been slightly more expensive. But um, as it is now, it's um, the lock itself is, is quite cheap on its own. So if you just buy exactly what you need, it's going to be cheaper. Than okay, so another couple of benefits on this particular mortise lock, which is different. They have this square drive. I know uh, some of their other brands did have a square drive as well, uh, but they have handles to suit it. So that's going to be good for emergency exits. Uh, that's the lock itself. I'll give you some sizes on it if I can find a ruler. Here's one. So it's pretty much a standard flip bolt. There's nothing really out of the ordinary. I'll give you this lock body here to start off with. Uh, 182. The depth on this one here is about 37, we will say. The width on this right here is about 23. Uh, this is for the face plate, where the face plate would attach to. And you're looking from the center of this hole down here to a to the center of this hole up here, 168. From this hole to the top hole, which is what you would mount into the aluminium, you're looking about at 204. Okay, the bolts, let's have a quick look at them. This one here, the protrusion on this bolt would be approximately about 25, 26, uh, about 43. And for the meeting one, about 33. Now I'm measuring from this lump here because once they're actually in this lock, they'll probably be recessed back a few millimeters there. So let's give you a bit of a rough idea. So the lock itself are uh, very well made. I mean, it's solid. I can feel the weight in it. It's definitely um, more superior than some of the other cheaper ones. I can just feel it. And uh, it looks like it has screw holes there, so you can kind of pull it apart. A lot of the other ones, you can you don't really pull apart. You just throw away. The action of it. So when you rotate this, it goes up, it goes down. I see some grease in there. I'm not sure of the quality of that grease, but the mechanism feels very smooth. Okay, so now let's uh, let's have a look at what's in the book. So they spent a lot of money on this um, this advertising here, and as you can see, it's got the little tongue that pops out there. Okay, and we'll open it up, and I'll show you a few different configurations. Because I don't have all of the configurations here, it'll give you a bit of an idea. So it goes through. Okay, so over here, looks to be some sort of restaurant or so we have the lock with two cylinders either side and looks to be like the wooden face plate has the hook bolt there which is most likely the longer bolt they've been using flipping over here um, they have what's called a hold back function i'm going to have to look into that because it's a flip bolt i don't know what they mean by hold back but that was something interesting anyway it's got some sort of special cam on the back of the cylinder 
As far as cams for this lock, um, it looks to be just a standard bunny uh, bunny rabbit ears, but I'll have to investigate in that too because no cams actually came with the lock. So I'm assuming it would be a standard cam. If not, they would have included some. So this whole back function is very interesting. Um, to be honest with you, I'll have to go through and read more about that. So these little pieces of metal here can be used as bolt packers. There's your three different sizes there. Oh, didn't have to measure it. We've got the sizes there. 22, 28 and 35 hook bolt. Now here's something interesting that um, other mortise locks don't have and uh, the first one is you've got this cylinder on the inside with uh, some sort of uh, indicator light which is interesting then you can have a lever with an indicator little light on there too let me zoom in for you to see show you here okay that's better much better so you see this one here it's got like a little red um, section there tell you that, tell you that but also now you've got this lever coming on the inside so the other way we used to do it was a big cylinder coming out with a lever, but these ones actually have the option of having the handle on there as well. So if it's a fire exit, that might be, you know, might be important to do that. They've even got an outside one. I guess that would be less work on the key rotating it. Um, so having, you know, you unlock it and then you rotate the handle. So there's some new features there. Back. Okay, so we've got uh, handles left and right. Internal handles. 45 degree action. So they would meet fire regulations as far as uh, exiting. Here you have your uh, double-sided, uh, sorry, double door aluminium slide together doors. Um, and this is the, that latch type mechanism where this part right here goes in, latches, and latches onto this part right here. So it'll just go straight in there and latch. A lot of the time what happens is that people put the bolt out and they slam them both together and this gets a workout. So it's better, I always tell the customer, it's better to, you know, put it together, then flip, flip it, to, uh, flick the bolt. So there's the latch, uh, what's that called, the latch keeper, I guess it would be, latching strike. Okay, so there's just another configuration of it, just in the aluminium with the handle, and there it is there. So it's not a bad looking lock, definitely not a bad looking lock. These interchangeable bolts are something different. There it is then, with the wooden, uh, wooden strike on the front. That's just installing the wooden strike. Now glass door was something I found interesting here because if you could put that lever handle on the inside, I'm not sure if it can be done or if there's enough room, but if you could do that, that would be very good for uh, egress where you need lever exit on the inside compared to having a turn snip. So that would be a very nice function. On saying that too, it would leave the door somewhat vulnerable to a coat hanger attack or something along those lines uh, com as compared to a simple turn, turn snip with a thumb thumb turn snip uh, but it is could be a possibility I don't know where this glass is and I actually haven't done one but I've seen some premises where it would have been nice to have a handle on a glass door set up just like this so that'll be something interesting to look out for in the future so there's the there's it installed once again you've seen that enough uh, there's the lock body here's all the applications aluminium timber glass and what it can and can't do so not a bad little um, not a bad little product expensive little booklet let's just put that back so it came out a fair few months ago I haven't had a chance to actually have a look somebody said why don't you have a look at it so I thought okay I will have a look at it I don't have all the strikes yet um, this is just one that I thought I'd buy find out um, how it goes and if it's well worth having in the van or not so I actually haven't fitted one and uh, this is pretty pretty much just a first look over one as far as I can see now there might be a lot of things that I haven't told you or there might be some things that I've gotten wrong in this video if there is just leave it down in the description uh, this is just pretty much an overview it's not a, a review or performance review in any way uh, because I haven't haven't fitted one it's a new product if you're uh, installing this lock and you like it please leave a disc uh, uh message down below let us know what you think if you're having troubles with one or you've had any troubles also please leave a message down below because it's better to um, hear other people's experience who have put these on jobs if they're running into any troubles that might save other people a lot of time and effort or trouble so that's the acrobat ballerina whatever you want to call it uh, by carbine we will be listing them on our, our lock shop but we won't be doing that for probably about another six months until we uh, kind of try them out in the field and see what we think of them uh, because that's one of the things with all these new products you really got to give them a test in every which way and let the customers absolutely give them a workout and try and break it because a lot of customers in commercial situations they don't care about locks they just want to you know smash it together turn it as you know they don't really care so once it's been on the 
on the job for six months and it's high use area and people have really given it a workout if it doesn't fail at that stage then yeah we'll definitely definitely be um, selling it so it won't be won't be long as for now I'll probably install one or two and see how they go see if they're uh, beneficial see if by having these three bolts in the vehicle is better than having three different locks and uh, the packers and all those sorts of things I'll I'll test all of them and see how well it goes together and I'll probably leave another review on how to fit it and uh, fitting it up when I get that opportunity okay so that's the Acrobat by Carbine thanks for watching